In this video you will learn how to make a procedural ocean with V-Ray. For this we will first build a basic water shader, then set up a displacement workflow for our waves and finally generate some procedural foam effects through fine tuning our shader. So here I prepared a little scene already and as you can see I have a ground plane which will become our ocean and this ground plane is just a very simple cylindrical plane as you can see here. And then I just place these rocks into the ocean. And those assets come from the Megascans asset library. If you want to know how to use them and how to set this up in V-Ray, there's also an own dedicated video that you can find in my channel. So at the moment, the ocean just uses this very simple V-Ray material that just consists out of a bluish diffused color and everything else is pretty much left at default. Now we're going to set up this shader to make it look a little bit more like water. So for this, let's first of all increase the reflection all the way to pure white here and then do the same thing for the refraction color as well. Once we do this, you can see that now everything that's below the water surface is also visible. And in general, it's always important to have some objects below the water surface because in the end it will make the overall appearance much more realistic than if there's nothing beneath the surface. At the moment, of course, the water looks too clear, too transparent, and that's what we're going to change in the next step. So at the moment, this ocean looks completely crystal clear and that's not really how it would work in reality. In reality, the more deep our ocean becomes, the less we would see what's happening down here. And responsible for that would be the fog color in V-Ray, which by default is set to a value of 255, so pure white. And that has the effect that no matter how deep our ocean becomes, we can always see without any abstraction what's happening down here. And in order to change that, we can just reduce this value, for example, to something like 254 in this case. Once we do this, we can see immediately what the result would be is that here in these kind of deeper areas our light becomes much less it gets swallowed and we can only see these kind of rocks which are barely beneath the water surface so now i think like this it looks already good now the only question is to find a kind of color value so that the ocean would also tint here in a certain kind of color we can go for this kind of bluish color at the moment the saturation is way too strong so let's just choose much lower saturation for example something like two in here and then you can see that we have this kind of like greenish or bluish tinting happening below our water surface and at the same time we have the effect that our light becomes less the more deep our ocean is so as next step we can play with the ior value and at the moment it's set to the default of 1.6 for water the realistic or physically accurate value would be 1.33 and once I dial this in, you can see it changes a little bit. We have less of reflection and everything that's below the water surface also gets distorted a little bit less. So overall, I would always try to start with the physically accurate IOR value. But then if you don't like the result, you can also tweak it manually in order to get some visually pleasing result because that's in the end what we are doing in here. For now, we just leave this here at 1.33. And now let's tweak a little bit the reflections at the moment. They are razor sharp because I have this glossiness value of 1.0. And let's just choose a value of 0.9. Once we do this, we can see that now our reflections become slightly blurred and it looks a little bit less CG like this way. So at the moment, we still have a 100% physically accurate water shader. But oftentimes in reality, when you're doing shading, you have to move away from 100% physical accuracy in order to get a certain kind of result or in order to get a result that's visually pleasing without taking too long time to render. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in the next step. So I want to have the effect that there are some small particles floating in the water and maybe on the surface itself. And in order to achieve that, I would need to mix in my diffuse color. And the diffuse color at the moment doesn't really show up. If I go to my lighting and GI parts, for example, it's completely black because the refraction amount is set to a pure white value in here. So once I lower this value, for example, to a value of 220, my diffuse color will start to be mixed in. And I will have the effect that we have some shadows, which are on the surface of the water. But I think in this example, it looks a little bit like the shadows. 
Now, if I go to the lighting channel, you can see that I have something showing up in the lighting and also in the GI channel here as well. And overall, while not being a physically accurate water shader, the result still looks more realistic and more finished than the previous version. So overall, as long as you know what to do and what you want to achieve, you can tweak the shader away from physical accuracy in order to get the result that you want. So at the moment the surface is completely flat and that's of course far from being realistic. We want to add some nice waves so that it looks much more like an ocean. To add these waves we will not use a bump or normal map but we'll just rely purely on displacement map. And for this let's just add a new V-Ray displacement modifier. So in this case I used a simple 3D mapping with an amount of 4 meters and a shift amount of negative 2 meters and then also increase the edge length from four to eight pixels in order to speed up the overall process. If you want to know more about how the viewer displacement modifier works, I also have an own dedicated video that you can find in my channel about it. Now we just need to add a texture map and I will just use a procedural approach. And for this, I will switch away from this classic material editor to the slate material editor, because that's much more easy to understand which kind of nodes are being put together. So now in the slate material editor, let's add a new composite map. And then in the layer one, let's just add a new standard 3ds max noise map. Then once we have that, let's also connect our composite into the texture map of our V-Ray displacement modifier. Once we do this, we can see there's now some displacement happening. At the moment, of course, it looks a bit weird. So let's try to find some settings which work a bit better. First of all, let's change the size, for example, to a value of 75. And then we just have much bigger waves. And then we can also choose the fractal noise type so that we have different kind of levels of details within the waves. I think now it already looks more interesting. We can now choose a different kind of tiling. At the moment, we have a very even tiling, but I want to have the effect that we have these kind of like longer waves, which are coming from here and going into the coast. And for this, I will just choose a different tiling, for example, 0.3 in here. And now we have these kind of longer waves that are happening. So now it looks already much better, but let's add a new level of detail on top so that we don't only have these kind of huge waves, but we have these kind of small waves which are breaking up these kind of bigger shapes. For this, we can just go to the composite and just add a new layer in here. Now let's add a new noise map in here. And then let's choose some different settings, of course. So let's just choose a size of 10 and then switch to fractal and then choose levels of 10. So that we have a lot of detail that's happening in here. And now we have this very fine noise up here. And at the moment, it's totally overwriting our previous waves, but we're gonna change that now. Let's just choose an overlay blending mode and then just dial back a lot with the opacity. Now, once we do this, you can see that now we have these kind of smaller waves, which are breaking up our bigger waves. And I think like this, we have already a much more nice looking surface for our ocean. So now after we finish the displacement for our ocean, I want to add a final level of detail for the ocean shader. For this, I thought I would just add some nice procedural foam on the edges here where the water hits with those rocks. And here you can see the before and after comparison, just that you know what we're gonna be building. So I prepared here a very simple shading network already. What we have here is the ocean shader that we built at the beginning of this tutorial. And then I just created a new shader, which I called foam. That's super simple. It just has this kind of bright bluish diffuse color. And then I created a new V-Ray blend material that just loads our ocean as the base shader and then our foam as the first coat material in here. Now I can just blend both of those shaders together by just changing this value in here. At the moment it's set to pure black. That means I'm only using the ocean shader. And if I put this, for example, to pure white, then I'm only using the foam shader and anything in between will kind of mix both of those shaders together. 
Now, instead of using this simple color value, we're gonna use a texture map that procedurally gonna generate the foam on those edges and this way blend both of those shaders together. So now we can just use a very simple V-Ray dirt texture. And then once we do this, we can see that now our foam is added, but we have to invert the occluded and unoccluded color because we use it as a mask. And now you can see that we have this foam turning up here in some parts already. And it's easier seen if we switch to the diffuse channel in here so that we can easier see where our foam is building up now. What we can do now is to change the mode. At the moment it's set to ambient occlusion. I also want to have the inner occlusion so we can just use this ambient and inner occlusion mode. Once we do this, you can see that now we have a lot more of these parts here being added for our foam. And at the moment the transition is very harsh so we can easily just use a higher fall off, for example a fall off of one. Once we do this we can see we have a nicer and smoother transition here on the edges. So at the moment we have some foam already building up on the edges but it looks kind of boring because it's this very gradual transition. I want to use a V-Ray bitmap as a texture map and then just load this kind of texture map up here which I'm gonna use in order to generate this kind of like nice foamy wave pattern here on the edges. And once I connect this into the radius of the V-Ray Dirt, so up in here, you will see that the result already gonna look a bit different. So we have some foam building up on those edges, but at the moment the radius would be too small. So let's increase the radius, for example, to something like four meters. And you can see we have more of those waves already starting to appear. Now the transition is kind of too abrupt. We either have foam or we have no foam, but I can easily just blend the radius here. For example, just choose a value of 90. And then we have a mixture of this kind of smooth transition together with those waves. If we see now the result in here, we can see we have this nice interesting waves building up on the edges and it kind of looks much more realistic now with this kind of additional layer of detail. You can now play with the radius, make it smaller, for example. You can see we have less of this effect or make it much bigger so that we have way more of this foamy effect here. And like this, really fine tune how your ocean will look like. So here you can see the finished result. I also added some kind of wetness here around the rocks using a very similar approach so that the ocean and the rocks blend much better together. And this way we can finalize this tutorial. So if you watch the tutorial until here, chances are that you also enjoy the content that I provide over on my Patreon, where you can download all of my scene files, watch additional bonus videos, or even whole courses, and also support this channel this way. Other than that, subscribe to this channel, post questions if you have any, and until then, see you in the next tutorial.